Tesla's 4,680 at 272 watt hours per kilogram. There's now a battery claiming 400 watt hours per kilogram, five minute full charge, and 200 year lifespan. No lithium. Donut Lab says it's shipping in March on real motorcycles, not lab demos. But here's what's truly shocking. The CEO won't reveal the chemistry behind it. How does a nine-person startup crack what Tesla, Toyota, and Panasonic couldn't after spending billions on solid state for decades? And why show empty battery shells at CES instead of working cells? Is this the 4680 killer we've been waiting for? Or the biggest red flag in battery history? Let's dive right in. When Donut Lab announced their battery delivers 400 watt hours per kilogram energy density, the battery industry went silent. Tesla's 4680 cells representing years of engineering refinement and billions in R&D, achieve 272 watt-hours per kilogram. Standard LFP batteries sit at 175 watt-hours per kilogram. Donut Lab isn't claiming a 10% improvement. They're talking about a 47% leap over Tesla's most advanced technology. The real-world impact would be staggering. An electric vehicle with 300 miles of range could suddenly travel 600 miles without adding weight. But energy density is just the opening act. The company claims their battery charges from empty to full in five minutes. Not the typical 80% fast charge, but genuinely complete in the time most people spend in a convenience store. Then comes the lifespan claim that defies thermodynamics. Most EV batteries survive 1,000 to 2,000 charge cycles before degradation. Donut Lab's specification? 100,000 cycles. If you charged this battery once daily, it would last 274 years. Even more remarkable, the company states this battery maintains 99% capacity from minus 30 degrees Celsius Arctic conditions to over 100 degrees Celsius desert heat, temperatures that cripple conventional lithium-ion technology. What makes these numbers truly shocking isn't just their magnitude. It's what the CEO confirmed next. This battery contains zero lithium. <sighs> that statement effectively breaks every established rule in electrochemistry. In battery science, Lithium enables the highest cell voltage among practical materials, and voltage directly determines energy density. Remove lithium and you're fighting fundamental physics. Sodium ion batteries max out around 150 to 160 watt hours per kilogram. Zinc based chemistries sit even lower. Aluminum ion remains experimental with densities nowhere near lithium-ion performance. So when Donut Lab claims 400 watt-hours per kilogram without lithium, they're either announcing a material science revolution or something doesn't align with physical reality. What deepens the mystery is the CEO's absolute refusal to disclose even the basic chemical family. He won't say if it's sodium-based, magnesium-based, or some exotic alloy. Consider how other secretive battery companies operate. QuantumScape guards their manufacturing processes, but openly states they use lithium metal solid state technology. CATL publicly discusses their sodium ion chemistry while protecting formulations. Even Toyota's ultra confidential program confirms lithium as their base element. These companies understand that revealing the chemical family doesn't compromise competitive advantage because the real intellectual property lives in electrode architecture and manufacturing precision. Donut Lab's complete silence suggests either they've discovered something revolutionary with no parallel in existing chemistry 
or revealing the actual materials would expose gaps between their claims and physical capability. Marco Letimaki told Electrek that Donut Lab needs to protect their chemistry for 10 more weeks until Verge motorcycles begin shipping. His reasoning? Competitors will purchase motorcycles, extract batteries, and reverse engineer the technology. By maintaining secrecy until production starts, Donut Lab gains first mover advantage. But this strategy fractures under scrutiny. If batteries are shipping in March, production has already begun. The company displayed physical battery modules at CES 2026. The moment any product exists outside their control, the chemistry becomes knowable. Modern analytical technology doesn't need months to identify battery chemistry. X-ray diffraction reveals crystal structures in hours. Mass spectrometry identifies elemental composition. Any well-equipped university lab can fully characterize a battery cell in days. The moment that first motorcycle reaches a customer, competitors can know exactly what's inside within a week. This exposes a fundamental contradiction. If the technology is genuine and production ready, the 10-week protection window is meaningless because analysis happens faster. If the technology isn't finalized, why accept pre-orders for March delivery? Perhaps the impressive performance comes from something other than revolutionary chemistry, and revealing actual materials would make that discrepancy visible. CES represented Donut Lab's largest stage to demonstrate their technology. What they displayed speaks volumes. The booth featured a battery module and empty cell casings. No working cells. No live charging demonstrations. No instruments measuring actual power output or thermal performance. Understanding why this matters requires perspective on how breakthrough battery technology gets validated. When Tesla announced their 4680 cell, they demonstrated cells charging vehicles, showed manufacturing processes, and provided testable vehicles. QuantumScape published detailed charge-discharge curves and cycle life data verified by independent labs. Donut Lab had the world's attention at CES, yet chose not to demonstrate a single working cell connected to measurement equipment. The explanation was that functional cells exist and are being tested by manufacturers under non-disclosure agreements. But if you're confident enough to accept customer money for March delivery, why withhold demonstration at your most visible public forum? One battery researcher commented that if they possessed a battery matching these claims, they would run every possible test in public because the data would eliminate all skepticism instantly. Electrek uncovered that Donut Lab invested in Nordic Nano, a Finnish startup specializing in amorphous titanium dioxide nanostructures in October 2025. Marco Letimaki sits on Nordic Nano's board and publicly linked their technology to Donut Lab's battery strategy. Amorphous titanium dioxide offers theoretical advantages. Conventional solid-state batteries use crystalline structures that crack like brick walls as ions flow. Amorphous materials have disordered structures like sponges, allowing dimensional changes without structural failure. The nanostructure also introduces pseudo-capacitance. Ions adhere to enormous surface area rather than moving deep into dense materials. This could explain five-minute charging because surface adhesion occurs far faster than bulk intercalation. Nordic Nano's nanofluid printing aligns with Donut Lab's descriptions of clay-like materials enabling simplified production. However, this introduces problems as significant as solutions. Titanium has substantially higher atomic mass than lithium. In energy density calculations, 
Molecular weight directly impacts performance. Heavier materials store less energy per kilogram. Titanium dioxide is also considerably more expensive than lithium ion materials. So how does a heavier, pricier material achieve 400 watt hours per kilogram at lower production costs? The mathematics don't align unless there's a breakthrough that hasn't been published anywhere in scientific literature. Marco claimed that millions of investors are attempting to invest, but Donut Lab refuses all discussions until technical verification is complete. This sounds admirably principled, but when placed in battery industry economics, it creates substantial questions. Developing solid-state technology requires extraordinary capital. Toyota invested over $13 billion in solid-state R&D, and still targets 2027 to 2028 for limited production. QuantumScape consumed $1.5 billion reaching pilot production. Even smaller ventures like Solid Power required over $200 million. Donut Lab operates with nine technical staff members. They claim to have achieved what multi-billion dollar corporations with thousands of engineers haven't accomplished without major investment. The financial mathematics become difficult to reconcile. <sighs> Self-funding doesn't scale to battery commercialization levels. What's particularly interesting is how the we're not raising investment narrative functions strategically. By generating global attention and demonstrating market demand through pre-orders, Donut Lab dramatically increases future valuation if they do raise capital. Telling investors, we don't need your money yet, creates negotiating leverage. This isn't necessarily cynical, it could be legitimate confidence, but it means we should evaluate these statements as business strategy, not just technical confidence. The global battery industry's largest players have collectively invested over $50 billion in next-generation battery research. CATL, Panasonic, LG Energy Solution, and Samsung SDI together produce 80% of the world's EV batteries. They've tested thousands of chemical formulations and filed tens of thousands of patents. Solid-state batteries remain their shared holy grail because the challenges are formidable. Interface resistance between solid electrolytes and electrodes creates power limitations. Dendritic lithium growth causes short circuits. Manufacturing processes that work in laboratories fail at production scale. Toyota announced solid-state progress in 2023, but acknowledged 2027 to 2028 as realistic production timing. QuantumScape's stock soared on promising test data, then crashed when scaling challenges emerged. Solid power factorial energy, and prologium all face similar struggles transitioning from laboratory to factory. Against this backdrop, a nine-person company claiming they've solved every major problem and will ship in weeks represents either the most dramatic breakthrough in energy storage history or significant misalignment between claims and reality. Small teams can disrupt industries. SpaceX revolutionized aerospace as a startup. But SpaceX demonstrated every stage transparently, conducted public tests, and built credibility through observable progress. Donut Lab's approach inverts this pattern. Maximum claims with minimum verification. That combination has appeared repeatedly in battery history. Envia Systems claimed 400 watt-hours per kilogram cells in 2012 that never materialized. Battery 500's promises faded. Inolith announced 1,000 watt-hours per kilogram that hasn't appeared. The fundamental question isn't whether breakthroughs can come from unexpected sources. They can. The question is... What evidence should be required before accepting claims that contradict established physics? Marco states independent testing is underway and verification will come soon. But soon has been the timeline for months. 
March delivery sits weeks away. The battery industry and customers deserve to see charge-discharge curves, cycle life data, thermal measurements, and independent laboratory verification before being asked to believe the impossible has become real.